guys, so once again, thank you for tuning in. Um, I kind of want to get right to it right now. Um, so, you know, it's been a, a challenging week uh, for most people in uh, the world of hip hop, if you want to say it like that. Um, for the, I don't know, how, how, would you, how would you word this in an appropriate way? Is this tragedy? Huh? Yeah, that could be good. that's a good word. Tragedy. Like the hood took somebody? Yeah. Like the hood just keep taking people? Yeah. All right, so the untimely demise of um, Nipsey Hussle. Nipsey Hussle. There we go. Let's go with that one. Right. So you know, um, your name. You know his real name? No, actually I don't. Jesus. Actually, isn't it Nip? Nip? Is Nipsey his real name? Actually, I really don't know. Oh, yeah, you can search that up. I actually really don't know. All right, so I search that up. So um, kind of to get into like the track of of like. The whole marathon thing, right? So, like, I don't know how much you guys know about, um, like, the whole wave, like, the whole marathon closing, clothing, and, you know, that whole thing. Uh, it kind of, I just wanted to talk about that, because I think that, Ooh, um, I can't say that. What is it? Hermias Ashidon. Ooh. Well, maybe he changed that last name. That's good. Or actually, name. well, he does have features, right? Like, the yeah, Middle Eastern kind of features. Yeah, he said a lot. Right? A lot. So, maybe. Into his Wikipedia saying. No, don't, don't read Wikipedia. That's not, horrible. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, people can edit Wikipedia. Like, yeah. you can go to Wikipedia and edit. Yeah, of course, you can edit Wikipedia. So I can just put... Like, you can make a Wikipedia by yourself. I can put myself like I'm Michael Jordan's coach. I can do that. You can, yeah, you can make a Wikipedia by yourself. Yeah, but don't do that now. So, um, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, um, the whole the whole marathon conversation or whatever, right? Um, mm -hmm. I guess, like, what he was trying to, like, come down to say... Um, it's kind of like, you know, something that I think I'm, it kind of goes over a lot of people's heads, right? You know how we talk a lot about how, you know, people put timelines on everything. You know what I mean? Like, okay, like, so by the time you're 30, you should be at this place in your life, right? Yeah, my uh, grandma. By the time you're 40, you should be, right. So we all have this, like, thing where, like, it, it is a constant pressure to be at this place in your life. You got to be here by this yeah, time. You got to be here by that time. Checkpoints. Right. And, you know, when you, when you... When I was watching um like many interviews uh, before like like before you know his, his passing he used to talk about like how you know he just takes his time right with certain things you know mm -hmm. what I mean and, and he's um he's not somebody who's like in a rush to like do something it's, just, it's about taking time and I kind of really like that point because you know Gary Vee says it a lot too like yo this is a marathon and a lot of us are really busy trying to run a sprint you know what I mean we're really busy trying to get somewhere that. That like like you know again I guess it comes with like this youth thing too or this whole millennial talk about how we just don't have patience right and we're very entitled and we like we yeah, want to, to work for nothing. exactly we just struggle exactly it's like you know you like we think that we deserve like to get this we're shit spoiled. and we just want exactly we just want this shit now and then and realistically we just kind of like always forget about the fact that you know like this shit takes time like anything worth building takes time you know what I mean and you just don't know when you're gonna go that's already like. Right, like that's already like the number one thing that the minute you're born, that like, you're always automatically guaranteed that you're gonna die. So what? Once you're born, you're automatically guaranteed you're gonna die. Why gotta like, do that? Because like, it's true. Sort of bleak straight after that. Like yo, when I'm gonna get out of my house, I'm gonna die. Well, realistically, everybody's gonna die. That, that's so. But that, that, actually, that's that, that can be a good thing. If you know you're gonna die, you make your days count. You don't throw them away because why would I spend my day in my house doing nothing when I'm gonna die? Make sure my life matters. You really got, like, no, no, I'm, I'm serious because people like mm -hmm. you can look at it as a, as a pessimist or you can look at it as a driving force. If I only have five days in this world, I want to make sure those five days I'm matter. Like, can you just clarify what pessimist means, please? <laughs> no, what pessimist means. <laughs> somebody, somebody who's negative. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. So, you know, yeah, and it, it's, it's true. Like, you know, so um, I guess like this is just this, this comes like this for me. And this is how, this is how I look at it, uh, just doing I'm down and stuff is that, you know, you have people with very big platforms. That are putting a lot of us on game right now, right? We have the Nipsey's, you have the Rick Ross, you have the Jay Z's, telling you, you know, what I'm saying, what you should try to be investing your money in, what you should sure try to build, exactly. And you have those people that have this huge platform that they're reaching a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know. And us, as you know, somebody who's you know constantly recording and putting content out and stuff like that, you know, I feel like it's responsibility for everybody who's trying to put content out. You get me? That you're in a smaller grade to you know, if you're inspired by those things, you know what I mean? To take on those mantles also to apply to your life so that the people that are at your level right now can see 
what that looks like to them. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of us right now, we're looking at these guys like, oh, these guys made it already. You know what I mean? These guys are already big. They blew up. I can't do it, blah, blah. But if you have somebody who's at your level, like, you know, like, yo, you're, we, we work at the same place. We go to the same school. We eat at the same restaurants. We go to the same places. We hang out. We play ball at the same places. You know, when you have those kind of people, right, that you're at the same level and they're doing it and they're trying to make it happen regardless of the circumstances, mm -hmm. whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're balling, whether you're not, when you're in those circumstances, then you're in a whole, you know, it's a whole different level for you. You get me? So it's, it's very, very different now. So those people could get inspired by what you're doing. You get me? And it's not necessarily because you bought in those inspirations, but it's because you put it upon yourself to go ahead and, you know, um... I guess take on that mantle again, you get me, of what these guys are doing, of what these guys are saying, you get me, so for example, if these guys are talking about, it's about ownership, it's about, like, you know, creating something that's for you, that you own, and then you're able to give it out to the world, most people are kind of like, put off by that, you know, but if you can go ahead and, if I can go ahead and buy the house next door, and then rent it out, and then go ahead and buy the house that's over here, and then rent that out, and then I'm owning stuff, and then people are looking like, oh shit, like, yo, I came, I came up with you. I know who the fuck you are, and you're buying shit. I can do it too. I'm worried where you come from my house. <laughs> I'll probably buy your house. Shut no. up. <laughs> That's me, relax. Right, right, but you know, um, but you know, when it comes to anything, man, it, it takes time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and I, I look at you now, man. Like, you know, we, we had a, a conversation earlier this week. That's like, it is dope as fuck to say the least, right? And like, you know, to see like. Like we've all come from, you know, the same place, but in a different place, right? I mean, now we're all in Alapada, right? We're all in AP, and but we're all different families, different values, different circumstances. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you got Golden Boy over here, <laughs> then look at Smile, right? Golden Boy over here. Never need a braces, just all. Exactly. Oh, all my all stuff. I need grills. <laughs> all I need to go to grills. I need to oh. go. <laughs> You know, and, and he, you know, he comes from like a, a Christian upbringing, like, you know, like, like if he was like a Italian mob family, he would be like top of the food chain, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's where Chris goes from. Like, if I was an Italian mob family, I'd be like a, like a baker or some shit like that, like a basic ass motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? You're super good, you know? And then Julian would be like the person that's trying to rob you. <laughs> That'd be Julian. But you know, like it, it, we all come from different circumstances, and it's it's crazy to think, you know, like like the things that that you know, like you you just unexpectedly like bring upon yourself, right? Like the energies that you have around you with the people that you that you decide to have around you, it's crazy to think like how far you come. You know what I mean? Like, yo, like Jay just got like you know like his job offer, and like yo, this is like you know like. From, uh, oh, so you finished your internship thing? Uh, like he finished his internship, you know he didn't get hired at the place where he was interning at but mm -hmm. the opportunity that he just got is a lot a lot better the than where he was at okay and and we're not talking about just opportunity but i'm talking about money wise like mm -hmm. like this is like this person is the first person i hear that yo that you get like this much at this time you get me like off bat yeah. you know what i'm saying like and it to me is amazing because you know again sky's always the limit you get me like you just go up from here mm -hmm. you know what i mean so and, and these are things that are un, unforeseen. You know I mean? You can't see it. Like, you didn't, like, plan this shit. You know I mean? This, some of this stuff just happens to you. You know I mean? Because of the energies or because of God, like, I would say. You get know I me? Mean? But oh, yeah, to I speak upon... For sure. But, you know, like, to speak on, you know, like, I guess other people who might not believe in God or whatever. Whatever it is that you feel that manifests in your life, it, it, you know, that's, that's what's going to take place. So, you know, for me, it's crazy to think that, like, you know, um, it's, it's un... It, it's crazy, like, you know, like I said, it impacted me, like, you know, when he did pass away because, um, I didn't like him for his music, even though his music is dope and stuff, I'm, I've, I've recognized his presence based off of interviews so and what he was talking kind of about. Like... Yeah, like, like, when I first, like, even heard of him, it was through an interview, you get me? Like, what he was talking about is what impacted me and what allowed me to go ahead and do other research and other things because of what he was mm -hmm. saying, so, you know, it had an impact in my life, so, you know, um... It's sad, but it's also, you know, I guess it's look at the bright side, you know, it's going to put on a lot of people now. Because a lot of people who have no idea who Nipsey Hussle is, probably went ahead and research, heard some stuff, you know, everything that he said is going to be there forever. In YouTube, in World Star, wherever, wherever it's at, you know, it's always going to be there forever for people to listen to. You know what I mean? That, that's his legacy. You know what I mean? Whatever he put out into the world, that's his legacy. So, um, it's just to say that, yo, life, life is that. Like, you know, life is not something that's fast. Wherever, if you feel stuck right now and you don't know 
what you're going to do with your life. You don't know where you're going. You just got to trust that you're making the right decisions every single day. You're trying to progress every single day. You're trying to move forward every single day. You're trying to better yourself every single day. Because you just don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know the plans that God has for your life. So I would say to keep that in mind that life isn't, oh, um, a bunch of deadlines and a bunch of like, oh, I need to be here by 25. I need to be here by 30. I need to be here by 40. But you don't know. Maybe you're a bum until you're 40. And then at 45, you blow up. You know I mean, you become something huge. You don't know. It, it happens different for everybody. So, you know, Jay-Z didn't put out an album until like 28 years old. And you got a little pump who, I don't know, at 17 or 16 or whatever, is already like a freaking humongous artist. So everybody has their own different timings. And I, I think that's like, for me, that's what I've learned so far this week. That's been kind of hard. I, I've been like feeling real down, like, you know, I go through like my ups and I've been going through ups and downs this week for sure. So, you know, but that's that's definitely what I've taken from um, these unforeseen circumstances. I want to say it like that. Again, to that. I think you nailed it. Um, when, you, when you see life as a marathon and not a race, it gives you perspective that, you know, whatever everybody else is doing doesn't really matter. Because in a marathon, what matters is that you make it to the finish line. It doesn't matter. Think about it. Nobody, if, when you run an uh, Ironman or whatever, sure, it's dope to win first place. But the fact that you finished is already an achievement. And I think a lot of us, we, we're competing against people who have no, who have no, they don't even know we're competing against them. It's a waste of our life. We're competing against Instagram, we're competing against social media, we're competing against, against the securities, and, and all of that is empty. When you realize, you know, life is a marathon, then you are thinking, how can I keep running to the point that I can pass on the baton next to somebody after me? Whether that, that's my kid, or whether that's, you know, my neighborhood, or whether that is my friends. But you build something that lasts, you know. And the whole thing about Nipsey the Hustle that, that's impressive to me because, you know, I, I wasn't big on him in any way, music or anything. I knew who he was. I knew that, you know, he was a smart dude because a lot of people said he was a smart dude, right? Nothing for me. But what, what's impressive to me is the way that people keep saying and out of that sticks out one thing, which is legacy. You know, when your life really matters, it will matter even after you pass away. And that should be the goal. The goal is, and you say it all the time, you know, Gary Vee says it all the time, right? What's more important is your funeral, not your birth, Right? What matters is what's going to happen when it's all said and done. Can your life make a meaningful impact on this earth when it's all said and done? Because that's the point of it all at the end. You know, and I, th I think that's it. That's key. That, would, that should drive your decisions. That should drive your, your, your anxieties. That should drive your, your passion, your everything. Can this make a difference when it's all said and done? Couldn't agree more. You got anything to add, bud? Uh... Well, when we were talking about like the marathon, a lot of times I feel like people get look at the checkpoints when you look at other people's expectations for themselves instead of you. Yeah. Because a lot of the times you'll try to compare yourself to somebody more successful and be like, oh, why am I not at that level? Like you could be like from the same neighborhood or something and you'll be like, well, he's here. And then if you're not looking around, you could be like your own family. I'll be like, okay, well, my expectations for you at this point, this, this, and this. And then a lot of times you try to meet those expectations and you won't even focus on your own goals. And by the time you're 40, like your life passed away and you're like, oh, okay, well, what did I do? And instead of like pacing yourself, pacing yourself, pacing yourself, because a lot of the times I feel like a lot of people try to like take on too many things and they're not really ready for them. And then you take the pressure, everything, and then you crumble and it's okay to fail. But if you were to just take the time, like let the food marinate, you cook it, it'll come out nice. You don't want to eat like tough food because you want to cook it quick. So I like if you... Just pace yourself and really, like, take your time and, you know, your life may be different than somebody else's. Like, you don't really have to, like, look and be like, okay, I have to be at that point. A lot of times, success is defined by how you feel. Like I said, you know, maybe you won't have a big mansion, but not everybody needs a big mansion. You know what I'm saying? Whatever expectations you have for yourself, just focus on yourself and figure out what matters to you. Like, leave the impact yeah. you want to leave. That's how I feel. Yeah. I feel that, man. Um, you know, for those of you guys who um, were impacted, not impacted, were curious to search, um, or have anything else to say, you already know, drop it down below. Uh, comment section, DMs, wherever you're listening or wherever you're looking at this. Uh, once again, we thank you guys. We appreciate you guys. Uh,